Okay, so <clears throat> mental set is this idea that when attempting to solve a problem, so we're getting into uh, what we would call hurdles to problem solving, um, things that get in the way of you being able to solve a particular problem. So a mental set is the first one, and um, basically it is the tendency to fall into established thought patterns. So what you are having is you are having people who are um, who have had an experience before and then they use that experience probably too often to solve the next set of problems because once again we're trying to solve a problem and we're using our past experiences in order to do that and sometimes that can trip us up so let's let's look at an example so when i was um in high school or no, this was in, when I was in college. When I was in college in my first car, um, the first thing that ever went wrong with it was the battery. So the first time it died, it uh, the battery the battery went out, and um, and so when I took it to the shop or whatever, and they told me what was wrong, there was like this clasp that had come unhinged or whatever, and so um, a few months later, when my car broke down again, what was the first thing that I looked to, or what was the first thing that I believed was the problem? I thought it was the um, the battery again. It turned out that it was something else. And so that is the this idea of mental sets is that we um, have beliefs about, you know, what is um, the way that we can fix a problem or we can solve something that oftentimes we kind of get uh, caught up in um, in our own lives and, you know, things that have happened before and maybe that's not really the right thing to do. So the picture on here is uh, a little bit uh, extreme. Um, but it should give you an idea of what we are looking for. So um, these are, this is a picture of um, uh, paratroopers in the Korean War, paratroopers, guys who get into planes, jump out of them, and they go into the combat zones. And um, so uh, the example here is that um, they are trained very specifically to do a step-by-step -step process when going out of the plane. The strap for the, um, to pull the cord for the parachute is always on your right shoulder. You use your left hand, pull it out uh, in, in order to do it. And so what they have is they have all this training that is based on you know, building this muscle memory of using your left hand to pull this strap no matter what, no matter if you've get, gotten shot, no matter if um, you know, you're being fired at, like all of this stuff is, is based on you just doing this automatically without thinking, with all the adrenaline, with all that going. So get to one of the jump, jump days and you have these um, paratroopers that are getting on the uh, on the planes and the last guy to get on um, was given a pair a parachute but the strap instead of it being on the left shoulder was on the right shoulder and the guys explained this like hey this is all on the the right the right sh or the left shoulder instead of the right are you clear with that does that make sense are you okay and the guy's like yeah it's not a big deal it's just over on this other side it'll be fine so they get on the plane and you kind of know where the story is going uh, the paratrooper jumps out and the parachute never goes and so after the battle, they go to the um, the battlefield to you know pick up the uh, the those that have died, and they find his body, and his whole right shoulder is completely ripped away. Um, his left hand has just bloody knuckles um, and fingernails torn off. The shirt's gone. He's ripped into his own chest because he had this mental block, this mental set of this is how things are the way they're supposed to be. And he was unable to take a breath, take a step back, realize what the problem was and to solve the issue. And so this is an example of mental set. Okay, so all I need you to do with this is follow the instructions. This is gonna be an example for the next one. See if you can solve it. If you can't, it's not a big deal, but it's kind of fun to, uh, to try. But this is connect all nine dots with uh, no more than four connecting straight lines um, that is drawn without lifting your pencil from the paper. So, um, so basically when you're doing this, like you have to do like a continuous line, excuse my lines not being very, very straight but you can't like go this way and then like go back over it you can't do this and then pick this up or anything like that so you have to keep it straight um you've got to you know you've got to do one continuous line so blah, 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 blah.
Okay. Uh, so try to solve that if you uh, can. It's a good little uh, good little practice for the next concept. Uh, so, so so give that a give that a whirl if you get it. Awesome. If not, no big deal. Um, and yeah. So I'll see you in the next slide. Okay, so this isn't going to be perfect, but let's give this a whirl. So um, let's go back to our previous example that we had the little little nine dot thing. Okay, so the rules were that you needed to draw four straight, use four straight lines in order to um, connect these dots. And excuse, this is not perfect, but we'll we'll survive. Okay, so let me show you one of the ways. There's several ways to solve it, but let me show you one of the ways to solve it. You just start down here in the corner and go up really high. And just imagine these are actually straight lines. You do this as a straight line. Ugh. It's super easy to go upwards, but then like sideways, but going diagonal is just hell. Okay, so there you go. Going diagonal is just not happening. But anyways, so you can see what I what ha, what has happened and what for a lot of you, um, one of the ways that you really struggled was this, was you created a limitation for yourself. You have to stay within the dots, but there was no rule about that. And so when you're able to think outside of the box, literally, um, you're able to solve this problem. You can't do it otherwise. And so, so often in our lives, we create limitations for ourselves saying, well, we can't do this and we can't do that. And we're like, well, is that really a limitation? Is that really a thing that we can't, quote unquote, can't do? And so we create these limitations that really can hamper um, our pursuit of, you know, whatever it is we are trying to do, whatever problem we're trying to solve. Um, okay, so it's real life. Uh, so Mr. Monk, um, you know, this has definitely happened to him before. He's at a social gathering. He sees an attractive woman uh, that he would like to go talk to. And then what does he say? Oh, well, Mr. Monk, you're not, you don't have any friends. You're not all that cool. Like, no, and she doesn't really want to talk to you. And so I create these limitations for myself. Like, ah, oh, she's too beautiful. You, you know, you'll never live up to it and uh, you, you'll make a fool of yourself. And, you know, I'm creating all these self limitations. I'm saying I can't do something. I'm saying that I'm not good enough or I'm not funny enough, or I'm not interesting enough when you never know what's gonna happen. So um, so that's an example of self-imposed limitations and uh, that is why Mr. Monk is still So there you go. All right, uh, cool, hope that makes sense, next. Okay, so functional fixedness is a, um, once again, we're still talking about hurdles to problem solving. So all we are looking at here is this idea that um, in life you are trying to solve a problem and you are looking for a very specific tool. Normally you would have a specific tool in order to solve that issue. And what ends up happening is sometimes <clears throat> you don't have that specific tool. However, you have something that you could use instead. You, um, you are trying to screw in a, um, like a little screw into, you know, I don't know, a little, little thing with like the little Phillips head. Like this drawing, Look at this, yeah, the little thing with the little Phillips head. And you don't have a screwdriver, right? Um, but you have a dime or you have a nickel. You have something small that could fit into this space here. Um, but you ignore using that because, you know, oh, well, I don't have this thing. And so um, functional fixedness. Once again, it's just the inability to see a new use for an object. It is an inability to solve a problem using this other thing. Um, you know, um, you've got to open up your, I don't know, your battery or your memory card on your cell phone. And uh, you're not able to do that because, you know, you don't have the specific tool. Well, you can find a pin or something in your house and you can pop out your memory card, whatever. So that's all we're looking for with functional fixedness, something super simple. Um, tons of examples in real life. Just think you have a problem. There generally is a specific tool for that thing or a specific thing that would solve that problem, but you're unable to see other, you know, other ways in order to find out, you know, you've got things that are around you. Um, uh, the sun is in your eyes and, you know, you forget that you can use your hand to shade it. I don't know, because you don't have sunglasses. That's a little, that's a little silly, but there's an example. Okay, cool. All right. Well, thanks for watching guys. Uh, I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um, I can draw a smiley face. Bam. See, I need to do these more often. This is kind of my next step is doing these with all of my lecture slides, but I I have lots of um, 
classes to teach, so it's a little bit hard. So anyways, all right, well, thanks a lot for hopping on and uh, watching this. Uh, if you guys have any specific questions, um, you can ask me in class on Monday or you can, uh, you know, look them up online or watch watch something. I don't know. You can figure it out yourself. These are these are pretty, uh, pretty basic ideas. So cool. Uh, well, I hope you guys have a good weekend. Uh, stay safe. Uh, stay stay warm. And we will see you on Monday later later this was supposed to be la hold on i can do this just go bye bye all right have a good one guys